Thursday, December 16th, 2021, a Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So big news yesterday, of course, was the Federal Reserve, the FOMC. Uh, I don't watch the mainstream uh, media, haven't for many years, but I, I was interviewing with uh, Elijah K. Johnson of Liberty and Finance, and, and he was telling me that on the mainstream uh, business news, all the talk was how the Fed became so hawkish, but I'm not going to talk about that today. And if you want to uh, know how I feel uh, about how hawkish the Fed is and, and what happened, uh, listen to my interview with Elijah K. Johnson on Liberty and Finance I did last night. Uh, but uh, uh, it's one of the reasons why uh, I am on Twitter. I know Twitter, uh, like YouTube, censors a lot of people, but I still have quite a bit of uh, people that I follow and that follow me there. And I saw a, a tweet yesterday from London Paul of the Sirius report, and, and that was way before the FOMC announcement. That was probably in the morning London time, and it was about Russia and China, and I think that was the most important uh, news of the day yesterday. And if I hadn't uh, seen it on Twitter, the tweet from London Paul, I wouldn't have known about it because uh, the Western mainstream press is probably going to completely ignore it. Maybe they'll come out next week or tomorrow and talk about it. Uh, they won't put too much importance uh, into this headline and to, into this story but I, I think it was very significant. It's to do, of course, indirectly with the petrodollar. And if you want to know more about the petrodollar, I've spoken so much about the petrodollar over the years that I have a, a playlist called the Petrodollar Files. There are uh, 24 videos in there. And uh, I la last updated it uh, on August 29th this year. And I, I'll prob probably put this video uh, into that file as well because it's highly significant. Uh, so I'm not going to go over why the petrodollar is so important for the U.S., for the world, and why its power, of course, is waning. Uh, it's not waning uh, suddenly, of course. That's the, the whole reason be behind the word wane. It's not disappearing uh, like very quickly. Some people have asked me, oh, you, you're saying the petrodollar is going to go and it's still around. It's still the dollar is still being used. But it, it's a process. It, it, it's not overnight. It's not done overnight. It, it, it's pretty much also like when the petrodollar was created back in the 70s. It wasn't created right away uh, after Nixon closed the gold window. Uh, it took a few years for uh, the American leadership uh, to get together with the uh, Saudis and come to an agreement. And that was probably by 74, 75, I'd have to say. So, uh, and the British pound as well, the previous uh, currency that had the status of uh, the world's reserve currency. Uh, that doesn't, didn't disappear overnight after World War I. It's, it was still highly significant. Even until the 1960s, uh, Australia, for example, was still part of the Sterling area up until I, th I think 65 or 66. Uh, Australia didn't have an Australian dollar until then. Uh, it used Sterling. So that's the way we have to look at it. So what's this story? Well, I've got it from RT, not surprisingly, not from CNBC or Bloomberg or the FT. It says, Kremlin reveals new independent Russian-Chinese financial systems. So the other significant uh, point I have to make, I think, about this story is that they wouldn't have uh, declared this uh, new system or come out with it, publicized it, unless it was ready uh, to go because they, they wouldn't want... The United States, of course, to know beforehand they were working on this, even though I'm, I'm sure the United States 
was probably uh, on the ball in terms of knowing what's going on. Um, or maybe not. Who knows? Maybe this is a surprise. But London Paul thinks this is uh, one of the most significant uh, pieces of news. Uh, and people will look back at this maybe a little bit like uh, the gold window being closed on August 15th, uh, 1971. So this was December 15th, uh, 2021, the day that the, the FOMC came out with its decision as well. So let's go through the story here. It's uh, by Lila Guest from RT, RT.com. Russia and China will develop shared financial structures to enable them to deepen economic ties in a way that foreign states will be unable to influence. The Kremlin has announced following talks between uh, the country's leaders. So uh, foreign states will be unable to influence. Well, I think that's uh, the United States. Uh, using the dollar as a weapon, uh, trying to, uh, with sanctions, of course, to punish uh, Russian officials and the Ru Russian people for not uh, really following American policy. Uh, and, and that's one of the uh, things that's hurt the dollar, I would say, that um, America has started using as a weapon political weapon instead of uh, an instrument to, to help the world uh, perform trade and commerce, because that's what a currency is supposed to do. But un unfortunately, uh, America, uh, and I don't, I'm not having a go at the American people, but at the leadership, of course, uh, they, they've come to a point where they're desperate and they're using uh, this last vestige of power uh, in the petrodollar to do things like that. Anyway, let's continue. The move appears to be a response to a series of warnings that Western nations could push to dis disconnect Russia from the Brussels-based SWIFT financial system as a form uh, of sanctions. Uh, that's part of the reason I think this has been going on for years. I don't think they just uh, uh, got together now uh, Putin and uh, Xi Jinping and decided to put this system together. It takes a, a lot longer to uh, develop something like, like this. It's been in the works for many years, I would say. Uh, the payment platform underpins the vast majority of international transactions. During the talks on Wednesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping called the call for increasing the share of national currencies in mutual settlements and expanding cooperation to provide Russian and Chinese investors with access to stock markets, said Yuri uh, Yushikov, Putin's foreign policy advisor. Yushikov said particular attention was paid to the need to intensify efforts to form an independent financial infrastructure to service trade operations between Russia and China. We mean creating an infrastructure that cannot be influenced by third countries. The Kremlin aid added, well, that's the United States, I would say, could be the EU as well. Ahead of the video summit, Kremlin Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov hinted that economic discussions were likely to be on the agenda for the two heads of state. Both Russia and China are said to be increasingly looking to move away from using the US dollar as the main currency of international trade. Instead, using their own denominations uh, to underpin the booming volume of Moscow-Beijing trade. Last week, US Under Secretary of State Victoria Nuland said that the White House, along with a number of Western European nations, was mulling completely isolating uh, Moscow for the from the global financial system should Russian troops uh, dare to invade Ukraine. Uh, just the day before, Bloomberg had suggested that Washington could target uh, the country's major banks 
and even disconnect Moscow from the SWIFT network. At the end of November, the boss of Russia's state-run oil giant Rosneft, Igor Sekin, accused Washington of manipulating the dollar to further its own interests and said the currency was losing its appeal due to the U.S. Federal Reserve's policy of quantitative easing, essentially flooding the global economy with an excess supply of money. Earlier this year, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov suggested that Beijing and Moscow, uh, I, I think <laughs> they wrote Washington here, but I, I think he meant Moscow, uh, need to move away from the use of Western-controlled international payment systems. The top diplomat also accused the U.S. of seeking to limit the technological development opportunities of both the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. So there you go. Uh, yeah, as London Paul said, this is really big news. And I saw later on yesterday, I think the Russians... Uh, or maybe the Chinese made a bilateral agreement. It's one of the two uh, with Myanmar, which used to be called Burma. Uh, I know the Brazilian president was invited uh, by President Putin uh, a few weeks ago to visit uh, him in Moscow. He accepted it. Bolsonaro accepted the invitation. I think he's going probably sometime early next year, maybe end of January, beginning of February. Uh, I, I bet they're going to be talking about this as well. And uh, what's the uh, common denominator when you uh, develop a bi bilateral system of trade like this? Uh, what do people, people need or countries need really uh, in order to trust each other? <laughs> well, I, I think we know uh, fairly clear what that is, and that's gold. Because uh, people, countries, they, they need to uh, make sure that uh, they're dealing with a country that has a, a, a fairly sound currency. And I think that's why Russia and China have been buying gold for so many years, because they, they knew that they would come to, the, to this point where they, they need to get away from the dollar. And that the dollar was becoming less and less credible as well, because of all the QE. And it was also being used as a weapon. So, yes, we've seen Brazil this year. They've uh, more than doubled their gold reserves. We're seeing other countries like India as well. That's uh, going to be a, a very big part of this, I think. It's the old BRICS, of course. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. They're going to be uh, a big part of this as well. Maybe I haven't seen South Africa too much in this in this uh, set of negotiation. Uh, so yes, with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 10 to 9 a.m. Today, just to uh, let you guys know, there are some other central banks uh, coming out uh, with their decisions. First will be um, the Bank of England. They're coming out at midday. They're expected to, to leave rates unchanged. They're supposed to, to have raised rates last month, but it looks like they're going to wimp out again. I think the Swiss National Bank actually is coming out before the BOE. They're expected to keep their rates at minus 0.75%. Uh, they're expected to be unchanged, uh, the Swiss National Bank. And then we have the ECB later on uh, after midday London time. They're expected also to keep their rates at minus 0.5. Uh, the BOE rate, by the way, is at 0.1%. We, we had uh, the uh, CPI and RPI data from the UK yesterday. Those are our measures of prices. CPI came out over 5%, but the RPI came, came above 7%. Uh, I think the RPI is more indicative of where inflation is in this country. So now to the markets. Uh, we've got spot gold, 1786.50. It's up $10. So just a little bit about gold and silver, what they did yesterday. They were under pressure uh, the whole day and they got hammered 
right on the uh, FOMC announcement at 2 p.m. New York. Gold traded down to 1752. Uh, let's see where silver traded down to. I uh, forgot exactly where silver went. Uh, silver went uh, to 2143. So uh, things look pretty bleak at that moment. The mining uh, stocks were getting hit really hard. They did recover at the end of the day as well. But uh, I made a video, I think last week or maybe uh, 10 days ago uh, about uh, what happened the last time the Fed changed tack in terms of monetary policy back in late 2015, uh, which coincides with when I started this channel. I said that uh, gold and silver bottomed um, then. Gold was at 1,045, and that's when the Fed started raising rates for the first time since the 08 crisis. And I said this could be the same kind of scenario now, even though the Fed didn't raise rates yesterday. They announced that uh, they're going to do uh, the tapering. They doubled the amount of tapering, and they're promising to raise rates next year, which is only a promise. Be as it may, though, it's a big shift for the market. So am I saying gold and silver bottomed yesterday? Um, there's a chance, but I don't want to. Uh, uh, nothing is certain in life. But I would say the technical move yesterday in the markets, the fact that we were massively down and then squeezed higher and finished even up on the day towards the end of the day that's usually quite positive and uh, the fact that we're continuing this morning to go higher is uh, uh, another technical plus but uh, of course with gold and silver things are never that clear and easy i would say so the low has been 1774 uh spot silver is up 10 cents at 22.16, highs been 22.23, low 21.90. Uh, the Dow, yes, uh, it looks like uh, the Federal Reserve, the FOMC, and j Powell gave the market what it wanted because the stock market rallied strongly yesterday as well, and it's continuing to rally right now. So, so much for being hawkish, uh, right? So, we are up 177 at 36,107, so up half a percent. The NASDAQ 100 future is up three quarters of a percent uh, at 16,405. And the S&P 500 is up 28 points at 4737. Uh, the uh, FTSE is up 71 points or 1% at 7243. Uh, the currencies, yes, uh, they rebounded a little bit versus the dollar and then continue to do so right now. Sterling is up a quarter of a percent, just below 133. We've got the euro up 0.2 at 113.15. The dollar is unchanged versus the yen at 114.10. And the dollar is down slightly versus the U1, 637.22. Uh, Aussie dollar is up a quarter of a percent, just below 72, and the dollar is down a third versus the Canadian dollar, 127.90. Uh, Kiwi dollar is up at almost 0.4 percent at 68.09. Now to the commodities, WTI crude is up 1 percent at 71.30. Uh, high grade copper is up 2.2 percent, 427.50. Uh, U.S. natural gas is at uh, 390, up 3.2%. So it feels like uh, the markets are saying, wow, the Fed is going to continue uh, with the accommodation, even though it seems like they've become hawkish. Uh, they're going to still be doing QE up until mid-March, according to Jay Powell. That's what he said yesterday. And the other uh, indicator... Uh, that um, the markets don't see this as being hawkish is the fact that the 10-year uh, yield is exactly where it was yesterday morning when I spoke to you. It's at 1.45%, maybe one basis point higher, which is insignificant. So there you go. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Uh, think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.